we're going to be talking about Compton scattering. That's why I put this straight out of Compton. You'll you'll see why that is in a second. So uh, Compton scattering. Let's just try to remember what's uh, going on with photons here. We've got photons and the wave particle duality. And photons have momentum, which means we can write this equation from our data booklet, right? That uh, lambda equals h over p. So that's why even if a photon doesn't have any mass, it still has a momentum. So there's something called Compton scattering. This is uh, coined by uh, at least it's named after Arthur Compton, who in 19 23, look at this experiment here where they're firing light at a stationary electron. And what would happen, of course, the light can then bounce off the electron, send the electron flying at one angle, and there's some scattered light. Scatter means like, you know, it's, it's sent off at a different angle. But what's interesting about it, though, was also that the light, the actual wavelength of light changed. So it went from like something a lower wavelength to something with a higher wavelength. So that's why I said, so the photons collide with electrons, they cause electron to move, the photon deviates, the wavelength increases. That's the key one right here, actually, this right here. And because the wavelength changes, it can't be explained by waves. Waves couldn't do this. So you can say that the Compton scattering of light is evidence of the particle nature of light. Remember, we learned that sometimes light can behave like a particle or like a wave. So in this experiment, we have an incident photon, which is coming in with a wavelength lambda i. That's the in incident or initial photon wavelength. We'll put that in meters. And it's going to be slamming into this uh, stationary electron. That's before. After, I've put the little line right here for like where it came in, where the electron was. Now the electron gets bounced upwards, sure, at some angle phi. And we have at the photon itself, so you know this initial photon that came in, it gets scattered. It gets sent off at a different direction. That's what we mean by scattered. At an angle theta. And we're going to call this final photon wavelength lambda f. So in other words, the wavelength will change. It'll go from something lower, that's why I drew it blue, to something larger, like that's why I drew it red. Now, uh, we're going to have this angle then. That'll be measured in degrees, sure. Uh, let's actually go ahead and figure out, to, or write down this equation. This is in your data booklet. You don't have to memorize it, but it goes like this. Lambda f minus lambda i. In other words, this change in wavelength. When a photon comes in and then changes, but we can also call it delta lambda. It's going to be equal to this, just going to be h over m e times c, all that times 1 minus cosine of theta. So this is your equation you need to be able to use. Although it looks complicated, let's go in it uh, step by step here. So we've got your wavelength changing, that's fine. h is just a constant, it's Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds. All right, then we've got the mass of the electron, Me. That's uh, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Again, that's in your data booklet as well. You've got theta, the scattering angle of your photon. That's in degrees, sure. And you got C. It's the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right, so that's what we have there. And here's a nice little pro tip. Maybe it's nice to know this fact here that, hey, what if your angle is actually zero? What happens then? Well, the cosine, let's just figure this out, the cosine of zero, what's that? That's the cosine of uh, zero degrees, oops, that just equals one. And one minus one gives you zero, so that means delta lambda equals zero. In other words, there's no change. It should make sense. If it doesn't go off at an angle, then there's no change in the wavelength. Okay, let's do an example. So we have an example here. We have a photon that has a certain wavelength here. So this is uh, initial wavelength. This will be lambda i. It's Compton scattered at an angle of 90 degrees. Ooh, that means we know that theta is 90 degrees. And the question is, and the electrons initially at rest, what's the wavelength? We want lambda f. That's what we want. Well, let's just write down the equation. We'll just start off with that. So lambda f minus lambda i equals, let's see, it's delta lambda, sure. That means it's h over m e c times 1 minus cosine of theta. Let's just put in all our numbers. Uh, actually, no, wait. First, I think I'll just try to deal with this to get lambda f by itself. To do that, then, I just, uh, to get lambda f on its own, I just have to add lambda i to the other end. So I can say then that lambda f is just going to equal this whole mess right here. So h over m e c times 1 minus cosine of theta, all that's going to be plus 
lambda i because I moved this lambda i from minus goes to the right becomes a plus. Let's try to deal with some stuff here. What is the cosine of 90 degrees? Cosine of 90, let's see what's that equal to? Uh, that's equal to zero. So that's actually kind of easy. Um, so because of that, then one minus zero, ooh, that becomes then just, let's just keep going here. That means I have lambda f equals, we'll put an h, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. All that divided by me, the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. Is that really it? Let me just double check. Yes. Um, all that times the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. Keep in mind, all that times just 1, because 1 minus 0 is just a 1. That means that that's why this here just actually stayed. And all that plus, now we got to think, what units do we want for this? I mean, if I really want to be careful, I should really say 0 0.0031, 0, but nanometers means times 10 to the minus 9. That is a key piece here you needed to be aware of. Now, you could have been sloppy and left it, but I just want to say this is what we should do here. So I'm just going to need my calculator, and I'll do the calculation myself. So here we go. I'll just do a fraction first. All right, and what do I, whoops, that wasn't a fraction, was it? there's a fraction and I'm gonna say 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 all that divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 all that times 3 times 10 to the 8 I have an answer here and I want to take that answer and add to it 0 0.0031 times 10 to the minus 9 and I get this answer is 5.5259 times 10 to the minus 12. Now I'm only allowed two significant figures here, so I'm going to say then that lambda f is approximately equal to, well we can say 5.5 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. I could say that actually if I wanted to. That's a correct answer because I've got it in meters. Or if I wanted to compare it to the uh, other one here that was in nanometers. Maybe I'll just write it like that just to double check. So uh, let's see, 10 to the minus 12. If I want nanometers, that means I have to move my decimal over by, let's see, 9, 10, 11, 12, that's 3. It means I gotta move my decimal point over by 3. That'll give me 0 0.0055. Uh, nanometers. So what happens then, do you notice? Just to be safe here, it's good to notice, remember, the wavelength is always supposed to increase. So did the wavelength really go from a smaller value to a larger value? It better, and it really did look. It started off at 0 0.0031 nanometers, and now it went to 0 0.0055 nanometers. So yes, it increased, so at least that's good, conceptually speaking at least.